good morning. I'm going to wait for people to come on and then I'm going to get started. Oh, man. I am Kimberly. My name is Kimberly and I run the blog Keep the Tail Wagging. And my blog started as a blog about raising dogs. I have two sets of litter mates, so raising litter mates. But a few years in, it changed to raw feeding. And so now, today, I blog about raw feeding. I blog about, oh my God, I think I'm missing. Oh no, I'm not. I blog about raw feeding. I blog about, um, you know, raising dogs naturally. And I just blog about life with dogs. But today, I am gonna show you guys um, how easy it is to make a raw meal. So because I'm horrible when it comes to the camera, I'm going to try and just show you what I'm doing lifted up to the camera. But before I get started, I wanna say that I have one dog that has EPI. I, I know, it's been a long time. It's been a crazy year. Um, one dog that has EPI, EPI is exoc exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, and that is a condition in which the pancreas just stops working. And when the pancreas no longer works, that means that a dog's body isn't producing the enzymes needed to digest food. So um, that means amylase, lipase, protease, they can't do anything. And ultimately what happens is even though no matter how much food you feed your dog, your dog is gonna slowly starve to death. So um, I put this into my dog's meals. This is called BioCase Plus. This is the last container that I have of BioCase Plus. The cost of this went up to $200 and I go through a container a month because this has to go into every one of his meals. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You go through it pretty quickly. Um, so I've now switched to, um, I think it's called Enzyme Diane's. I have a monthly order that I'm waiting excitedly for, but you have to add this to um, all of your dog's meals. So. I had to do that. You let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes. You mix it in with warm water, let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes, and then you come back and mix everyone else's meals. And that's what we're gonna do now. So over there is the pantry. I'll turn the camera a little bit so you can see that right there. That entire cabinet is everything for my dogs. So today my dogs are eating a mixture of quail, beef organs, pork heart. I add additional pork heart because it's so nutritious and it adds more vitamin B to their diet. Um, I have my dogs tested and um, nutrient tested probably two, almost three years ago, and they were low in vitamin B. And so that's the only tweak that I needed to add due to their diet, due to their diet. So I added the pork heart. Um, I'm also adding duck feet. And I, although people are like, oh yeah, you should add duck feet feet for joint health. I just add them for the crunch. My dogs love to crunch on things, so that's why I pretty much buy it by the case. I think a 40 pound case of duck feet that I get every couple months. And I just, I don't add them to their diet or their meals every day, but I add it most days. So I measure every single meal. I, you can just buy a kitchen scale at a local store. And I'm very conservative about how much I feed to my dogs because I will admit in the past, I have had um, fat dogs. And the reason why is because I followed those, what are they called, the, the raw feeding calculators online. But what I didn't do is adjust to my individual dog. So although they have the, you know, the activity level and everything of your dog, if you don't adjust it to your individual dog, you can end up underfeeding and overfeeding your dog anyway. And that's basically what I did. So this is one meal. It's as easy as that. And I'll tip the camera to show you guys what I'm scooping out of. I feed mostly ground because now where I live, which is Western Washington, a lot of the food comes already ground. So that's nice. And I don't have to do a lot of work. I actually only grind up duck wings. I order 40 pounds of duck wings. I was doing it every other month. I'm going to start doing it every month. Um, and I'll probably just start doing 40 pounds, 20 pounds, 40 pounds, 20 pounds. The reason why is because one of my dogs was recently diagnosed with hermangiosarcoma. And for those of you guys who don't know, this is a very aggressive cancer. Um, I'm going to tell you, honestly, the diagnosis isn't, I'm trying to make sure I'm, so that's him, that's him, that's him. I have to make sure that all of the bowls are, um, okay, good. I have to make sure I'm doing all of the bowls right because now that I'm talking, 
feeding dogs, I get a little lost. But anyway, hemangiosarcoma is a very aggressive cancer. So to be honest, my dog hasn't officially been diagnosed with hemangiosarcoma right now. She has um, an enlarged spleen, slightly enlarged, and it had a slow bleed. We've managed to stop that with supplements, but um, and she's doing great. So she was diagnosed last Wednesday, but I immediately went into cancer protocol. And um, so she has an appointment in a couple of days to have a full on ultrasound to see what they're dealing with. And then we are going to just take the spleen out because dogs can live a long, healthy life without a spleen. And then, then they'll test the spleen. They'll send in um, samples to see if it's benign or if it's malignant. And so I'm hoping that it's benign and then we'll be done. But either way, I am feeding Sydney a keto diet, and I will get to that in a second. I'm just going to continue spooning in everyone's food. I'm always impressed with people who can feed their dogs just based on eyeballing a dish because I cannot feed my dogs that way at all. And I just realized that I gave one of my dogs the wrong bowl. Each of my dogs has a certain bowl. And what I would prefer, I was talking to a girlfriend the other day, what I would love is if they had um, really good, solid, healthy bowls, but they were different colors. So each of my dogs had a different color bowl. So I bought a second scale for Sydney. And the reason why I have two scales is because you have to um, alternate the scales between um, pounds or pounds and ounces, which is what I usually use, and grams. So a lot of keto diets are measured in grams. I have a friend, she manages the site Baby Steps to Healthier Pets, and she does keto meal formulations. And so she formulated a meal for me. And from there, I've been able, it's a sort of like once you get used to making the meal, it becomes a lot easier. And then I have a keto meter. I think it's called Mojo Keto and you can get it on Amazon. I think you might be able to get it at some um, pharmacy stores, but I got mine off of Amazon and it's super easy to use. It's just sort of, just like a glucose glucose meter, you puncture, I do her lip, um, the blood comes out and it tells you if she's in ketosis. So she's she quickly went into ketosis. She's on a two to one ratio. For those of you guys who do not know what that means, when this is over, I will go in and link some information into the notes. But basically two to one, four to one ratio is a very aggressive keto diet where it's just like, my dog is has cancer, this is serious, let's get on this. And a one to one ratio is more for people who like to bring their dogs in and out of ketosis on a cycle because a lot of people will do it like they'll put their dogs in ketosis and feed them this diet for a couple months and then they'll take them out of ketosis and feed them their regular food and then put them back so um i was advised to just start with a two to one keto diet because um she would go into ketosis uh and what i just said that's based on my understanding i may be wrong and so i'm up for people correcting me i'm very new to this so Right now, what I thought that I would have to do is make completely different food for Sydney. I don't, which is nice. I just need to um, give her her food. I feed her a lot less than what I've fed her in the past. And it's different. And it may, it's kind of scary because it makes it seem like, you know, is this gonna be enough food for her? It is, it's plenty of food. I feed her exactly what the other dogs eat. And except for I add chia seeds and there's a, I think it's, I have to reset, I have to keep resetting the scale, but I add chia seeds. I think I didn't explain why I have two scales, but I have two scales because it's hard to toggle back and forth between grams and pounds with some of the scales. Cause you sit there, you're trying to hit the button to toggle and it just doesn't work. And I don't like the frustration. And of course, when you're dealing with a cancer diagnosis, you want to eliminate as much of your frustration as possible. So there's the chia seeds and then oil. I'm using avocado oil. I've tried different oils with her. I tried grass fed butter, she wasn't feeling it. I tried ghee, she wasn't feeling it. So, and I know she doesn't like coconut oil. So I have MCT oil by Cocoa Therapy and then I have avocado oil. And so right now she's doing avocado oil and she will stick on this until, you know, she doesn't like it. And then I'll switch her to um, 
uh, what is um, MCT oil. Since she's having duck and duck is a fatty food, I don't put as much oil in. I also add in omega-3 fatty acids, or I'm sorry, fermented fish stock, because not only does that have omega-3 fatty acids, it also has COQ10. And with hermangiosarcoma, there is a concern about the heart. And so COQ10 does a lot with heart health. And then of course, fermented fish stock is just really healthy. And I just pour a short pour. And if I were to measure it, it's probably like two tablespoons of fermented fish stock in. And that is it. As far as supplements, the supplement list for my dog is insane. And so I will um, add a link to the blog post that I just wrote about what I'm giving her. It's all natural stuff and it's based on, you know, conversations with my veterinarian and loads of research. She gets turkey tail mushroom, which is very good for cancer fighting. In the evening, she gets chaga mushrooms, which is also excellent for cancer fighting and one of the foods that has the highest um, antioxidant levels on the planet. So she gets three scoops of this and then she gets three scoops of the chaga in the evening. I am sniffling like crazy. She In the morning, she also gets Yunin Bao, and this is what stops the bleeding in the spleen. She gets two pills in the morning, two pills in the evening for five days, and then she goes five days off. So I have to track it on a calendar, and then she'll go back on for five days. And finally, twice a day, she gets C60. And this is um, pure hemp extract in olive oil. She gets two capsules in the morning and in the evening. Sydney has arthritis and she can't be on any type of pain medication for her arthritis during this time because that might promote a bleed. So she is on this and I think I'm going to keep her on this even after we survive all of this because not only does it work, but um, you know it's natural and I don't have to worry about any type of side effects down the line. And that is it. So this is a keto meal. So I'm sorry about the light, but that's a keto meal. And here is a regular meal. They look exactly the same. The big difference is basically the additional fat that I'm adding and she eats it. And you would think that um, her meal used to be, I, mean, I should actually, maybe I'll, I'll measure these on the scale real quick. Let's see, to see just a, a difference of the measuring. It's about, is it two ounces? About a little over two ounces, that difference. So it's really not that much less food. I was worried that she would be hungry all day. Um, she eats her food and walks away. She goes, we go out, she has a potty break and she goes and just chills and hangs out. Her energy level is good. Her gums, which were white last week are now lovely and pink and she's back to her normal self so it is possible to feed a keto meal so in the time that i've been talking to you it's been 13 minutes i've made meals for five dogs well actually i made meals for four dogs because one meal was already made but it is just that easy so i'm sorry you guys didn't get to see it i will get better with the camera work but yeah feeding a raw diet is not hard it's not complicated and before i sign off let me just explain what i did to make this meal and what i mean is this all this is is ground duck because i had some left over um ground quail that i got from columbia river which is a resource that we have out here in the pacific northwest um chopped up pork hearts um ground beef organ blends from a company called greentribe.com and then i use dr harvey's paradigm i mix all of that up dr harvey's paradigm is a base mix so i hydrate that i mix everything up boom i'm done um, some people don't like the idea of using a base mix. I don't really know why, because it's so easy. Uh, it basically covers all of the nutrients that your dog may not be getting in an 80-10-10 diet, and then you adjust accordingly. Um, in the morning, my dogs don't get any type of additional supplements. In the evening, they'll get um, an herbal blend that I actually, I purchase an herbal blend and I add it, um, some turkey tail mushroom to it and they get that and they get their joint supplements. And I'm trying to see, do they get anything else? Oh, and they get kelp. So that's basically all I add to their meals. Um, maybe a little other things here and there, but I try to keep it light and easy. Oh, I also added immune supplement from um, 
Dr. Harvey's. The reason why Sydney doesn't get that immune supplement is because it has turmeric in it. And I do not, you cannot give a dog that has a bleed turmeric because the turmeric promotes um, bleeding and stops the blood from clotting. So it's like a huge problematic issue, but that's basically it. So I will come back later and update this with links to more information if you're interested in it. But I just wanted to do this video, one, because I haven't been on YouTube in forever, and two, it's always so important to show people how easy raw feeding is. I get emails all the time from people who wanna feed raw, but, they are afraid to get started. So before I sh sign off, oh, thank you so much, Adam. Um, I don't know if you're Adam or you're Jamie who's watching, but thank you both. Um, hi, Courtney. Rhonda says, my 14-year-old lab Roddy started having seizures. Blood test and thyroid is good. Any ideas what I can give her? She doesn't eat raw. I don't. What I would recommend is that you reach out to a veterinarian. Unfortunately, I am not able to give any type of medical advice. That would be considered practicing medicine without a license, and I can get into a lot of trouble for that. And even though it may seem like a simple question, um, it's touching on health issues. My friend, Dr. Lori Kozier out of Albany, New York, does do consultations. And so she can basically take your medical issues and think about what things you can add to a diet to help support your dog. That's not something I don't, I just don't know enough about the medical side of raising dogs um, beyond my five dogs. So I don't wanna give you the wrong information. So she, you can find her at healthydogworkshop.com. And she does, yeah, she can do consultations if, not that, then I can suggest that you contact like a local, if you're looking for nutrition and if your own vet isn't able to help you, talk to an integrative vet or a holistic vet. Um, and if you have one in your area, you can also talk to um, a veterinary nutritionist about what you can do with your dog's diet. Um, oh, Rhonda, put different color nail polish on the top of the rim to tell the difference. Oh, that's such a great idea. I don't have nail polish. I'm trying to think of what else I can use around here that I do have, or I can just go buy some cheap nail polish. That's perfect. Thank you, Rhonda. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, I bought different colored Fiesta bowls for my dogs. Oh, I really love that idea too. So I am going to do that today. Thanks for the idea, you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to try and get back into the habit of doing this. I have so many videos that I need to upload to YouTube. It's not even funny. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I know this is a trying time for everyone. So I hope you guys are doing good. We are doing good up here. Um, electrical tape on the rim. <gasps> That's even better. I like that. Thank you guys. Gosh, you guys are awesome. So thank you. Have a great Monday and have a great week. Bye guys.